Most of today's benchtop oscilloscopes can count captured pulses. And some scopes can also totalize events using a real-time counter. So what's the difference between counting captured pulses and totalizing events? Hi, I'm Johnny Hancock, Product Manager for Keysight's InfiniVision X-Series Oscilloscopes. Let's get started and I'll show you the difference between these different types of measurements. So I've got my oscilloscope set up to capture a burst of pulses. It's gonna be thousands of pulses and I'm gonna count those pulses two different ways. I'm gonna use the pulse count measurement, which I have set up, and the hardware totalizer. So from my generator over here, I'm gonna go ahead and generate the burst of pulses, and they each measure 6,000. Now, if I generate the burst again, the pulse count still says 6,000. It took the next acquisition and, and counted the number of pulses again. The totalizer continues to count up. So now it's 12,000, 18,000, 24,000. But for a single burst of pulses, they both gave the same answer. But there is a limitation on the pulse count. Uh, it can't count more than about 30,000 pulses across screen, whereas the uh, totalizer is essentially unlimited. Now, it's not quite infinity, but it's pretty darn close. It's up there uh, about six, 64 bits. Now, if I change my time base setting, and let's clear my readings and start from zero again, generate my 6,000 pulses, the oscilloscope pulse count measurement only measured 1,000 because it only measures what's captured on screen, whereas the hardware totalizer still measured 6,000 because it doesn't depend on what's digitized. It's counting the number of trigger level crossings, just like a standalone counter would do. Here's another example comparing pulse count on the digitized waveform versus the totalized capability using the hardware counter. This is a digital clock signal, and it has a very infrequent glitch. Out of one million cycles of the clock, there's this very narrow glitch. And right now I have the totalizer running and it's just counting up. Right now it's up to uh, 270, 280 million hits or crossings. The pulse count just simply says 17 because it sees 17 pulses across screen. What I would like to know though is the number of times this very infrequent glitch occurs. And we can count that by changing from just trigger level crossings on channel one to trigger qualified events. Now I have to go scope set up triggering on a narrow pulse. And now you can see it counting up much more slowly. We're up to about 30, 40. And so it's counting the exact number of glitches that occur real time has nothing to do with the waveform you see on screen. So far, it looks like the hardware-based real-time totalizer is winning this battle between the hardware-based totalizer and the pulse count on the digitized data. I now wanna show you a different example where the pulse count is gonna win the battle. So here's an example. This is a serial bus signal, it's called USB PD, USB power delivery. And perhaps I want to know how many pulses occur in a particular burst or frame. So right now I'm doing a gated measurement by cursors and I'm zeroed in on just one burst of pulses. And I want to know how many pulses are in that burst. The pulse count says there's 211. The totalizer is just giving me a running total of trigger level crossings, and it's uh, it's somewhat meaningless. Uh, let's let's measure this next burst here. So in this next burst, there's 117 pulses. So this can be very handy if you if you have serial 
buses where there must be a certain amount of pulses per uh, burst or for, per packet, you can very accurately measure it with the pulse count. If you think you might have learned something in this short video to make you more proficient in performing oscilloscope measurements, I invite you to view our other InfiniVision oscilloscope measurement tips videos. To learn more about Keysight's InfiniVision X-Series oscilloscopes, go to the URL listed on your screen or contact one of Keysight's authorized distributors. Thanks and Simplify.